good kitten internet, um, you'll notice things look a little bit differently. I'm, well, one, this logo over here, I'm just using temporarily just because, I don't know, I, I was planning on changing things up as the run progresses, but more importantly, I want to differentiate these interlude videos from the rest. I may end up changing a logo for the rest of them, though. I'm not sure yet. Anyway, hi. This is going to be a little bit different of a Wild Arms video in that I'm going to progress zero plot, and at the end of it, I will reload back from where I came from. So, you can skip this video if you want. I am going into crunch mode because this is the way my brain works. So, um, I'm currently using an emulator for this. Um, so, I should mention the random freezes that we found last time. Um, that happened last video, and I want to say it was the second video, maybe the third. Anyway, um, those random freezes are apparently a known glitch of Wild Arms with certain models of PS2s, specifically mine. So, I could either, one, buy a PS1, which I don't want to do because now I can't get component output out of it, and that makes everything a lot more difficult. I would actually need to buy a PS1 a PS1 SCART adapter, then a SCART input to 9-pin um, DIN for my retro, um, not retro meister, brain, brain not working, uh, frame meister, there we go. And that's a lot of money. Um, yeah, that's probably about $150, US dollars that is. Or two, buy a slim PS2, I think those should be fine because my partners played through Wild Arms 1 on their slim PS2 with... They never mentioned any freezes to me. I'm pretty sure they would have mentioned it, uh, because they're obnoxious. Or three, suffer. Or technically four, which is what I'm doing for these interludes, emulate it. So this is uh, RetroArch. Specifically, I'm using the PCSX rearmed core. Hi, Boo. Do you want to say hi? There's a Boo kitty. Not one of my videos without a kitty cat involved. Um, so I'm using RetroArch just because it's relatively easy to set up and I can make it look pretty. Also, I should actually move the window where it's underneath the camera so I don't look like I'm completely staring off. So, um, just to add insult to injury, I'm using an Xbox One controller for this because, you know, why not? Um, so for reference, this is immediately after the last uh, episode five. Um, all I've done is literally walk out of Cecilia's room and save. Um, there's nothing changed about this. I'm intentionally using this save rather than the save in Cecilia's room, so I don't have to go back and deal with plot. So I'm gonna just reload from Cecilia's room when I'm done. So here's our party. Um, one thing that I noticed is that Cecilia's level eight. That shouldn't have happened. Cecilia went without a lot of battles. She's way lower on XP than everybody else, as you notice. But it matches. Like, Cecilia will level up before Jack, but after Rudy. It's weird. It's something I never noticed before. So, the purpose of this particular video is to figure out how stats work. And I'm going to be showing you how I'm doing this. Um... I've done a lot of investigations, uh, I have cracked how the, mostly how the memory card format actually works, and in a later video I'm actually going to be showing that, but I have a glitch at the moment where I think it might be doing some type of uh, cyclic redundancy check in order to figure out if the save is valid, because when I edited the save, it, it acted weird, that's about the only way I could describe it, um, and actually here I can show you. Uh, ignore the first memory card slot, that was just me generating a memory card so the game knew what was going on. You'll see that I have this thing labeled as other data sitting at the end of this virtual memory card. If I actually go into the memory card manager, again ignore slot 1, that's just me screwing around, you'll see that I actually have a Wild Arms file here. And it's accurate. So I'm very confused as to what's going on with that, and I'll figure that out later. But it's actually irrelevant for this particular video because what we're dealing with are stats. So in order to 
do the same types of things that I am for anybody that's wanting to play Wild Arms and wanting to know how to do investigations on their own or to cheat. What you're going to need to do is you need one of each type of apple. There are four apples in the game. There is Power Apple, Agile Apple, Mystic Apple, and Hardy Apple. Specifically, you need exactly one of them. So what I'm going to do is intentionally use up all but one. So you need one of each of those apples and at least two items of the same type that you can use in combat. So for instance, we can use two potion berries or two heal sol heat solves. Um, we're gonna use heal berries for this just because we have tons of them. And this is a very common item duplication glitch. By very common, I mean the exact same glitches in several PS1 RPGs. Uh, Final Fantasy VII comes to mind immediately. So what we're going to do is that we're going to start duplicating these items. And the way we need to do that is in combat. Naturally, everybody has best luck right now, so random encounter rate's a little lower than normal. All right. So, in order to duplicate the items, what you end up doing is you have each of the characters use an item. So, the first two characters use a heal berry. The third character swaps the location of heal berry with the location of agile apple in this case. And does something. It doesn't matter what the third character does. What this is actually doing is that the game has already swapped the two locations, but it remembers that Jack used a healberry and Cecilia used a healberry. Or more precisely, it remembers that Jack used a healberry, the healberry in position zero, and Cecilia used a healberry, the healberry in position zero. So what ends up happening is that you end up using the item in position zero, which we finished combat. Luckily, we finished it after. Luckily, we're fast enough. If you are actually slow enough, you can cause problems. So now if we look at our inventory, we have 255 Agile Apples. By the way, 99 is the most that you should actually have. So we can repeat this process with the other apples, which I'm going to do for the purposes of this test. And the reason why I'm choosing the forest is because usually there's goblins in the forest. And goblins are, well... Less weak than balloons. Oh, it's a pill bug. I'm actually not going to bother with the pill bug because there's a good chance the pill bug is actually faster than uh, Cecilia. I'm not sure. If there were two of them there, I might do it. But pill bugs run away. And that's the one creature type in here I do not want to deal with. So let's just walk around somewhere. It doesn't really matter where we walk. Um, the encounter area doesn't really matter. Preemptive Strike is actually great for this, so we're going to use Healberry. You'll notice that it doesn't drop the number of Healberries either. Healberry. And swap Healberry with Mystic Berry. And then Rudy can attack. Rudy's last, so I don't need to worry too much about that. So, this should, oh yeah, the boogie. And now you can see what the boogie looks like in Cecilia's uh, normal outfit. She stays in the outfit for the rest of the game, for reference. Um, by the way, how's the audio quality? Is there any noticeable difference? Because I know that emulating Wild Arms has a noticeable drop in audio quality, but so does uploading videos on YouTube. So I'm honestly not sure if the YouTube encoding Algorithm is already compressing the audio to the point where it's useless anyway. I'm gonna use Healberry. We only need to do this a few times. Healberry. Swap Healberry with Power Apple. Um, by the way, we can do this for any item. That also includes the secret sign that's over here. That is actually one of the more common ways of cheating in the game. Uh, not to mention, secret signs are very valuable monetarily, so you can have tons of money right in the beginning of the game, but more importantly, all of Jack's abilities drop to one MP. And, yeah. So we're only doing this for each of the apples for this demonstration. Later on, when we analyze how Jack's abilities work, we'll end up doing it for secret signs as well. 
Um, but that's going to be another video. I have several of these planned for reference. Um, the next one of these is probably going to be how level ups work. That's the reason why I've been telling editor me to take a look at uh, everybody's stats on each level up, because I'm trying to figure out, well, what level ups actually do, because I honestly don't know. I know they increase stats, but I don't know if it's, hey, look, Cecilia always gains five sorcery points every time that she levels up, or if there's a randomness involved, or pseudo-random, like in Channing Force. These are the types of things that I constantly think about, by the way. Um, this is not unique to Wild Arms. It's just Wild Arms is the only game that I know of that I'm thinking about things like this, and nobody's looked. So um, the Shining Force series has been analyzed to death at this point. Um, and that's good. I like the fact that people like the game and think the way I do and try to figure out how the game works. Um... The Might and Magic series, in fact, um, as in 6, 7, and 8, the trilogy that I did a Let's Play of, uh, that also somebody went in and analyzed and figured out how all the stats work. That's the reason why I was able to tell you decisively, yeah, the way it works is that there's certain numbers that you need to reach, and once you reach one of those numbers, you get a bonus. If you're one below it, you don't get the bonus. Alright, so now we have our items. And um, by the way, I haven't planned, I haven't done any of this in advance. Uh, this is all spur of the moment, so I actually don't know what the results are going to be. So, let's use Jack for an, our first example, because Jack's attack is definitely using Might. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. So, let's get into combat really fast. Uh, actually, I'm going to save state. Save state. There we go. By the way, if you're looking for an uh, emulator to run, I highly recommend using RetroArch and all of its cores. It makes things a lot easier, especially for streaming, because I can use these same settings for everything. Balloons are actually what I want to encounter, because I think balloons have the lowest defense of any creature in the game. So, first thing we're going to do is have Jack attack. This gives us a baseline idea as to how much damage Jack does, which is 123. I know that there's some randomness in the damage, I don't know how much. So we're going to have Jack attack again, see what we get for a second attack. This is a crit, this is actually good, it's 125? Huh, I think I might know how crits work now. So I'm going to write this down. Um, let's see, my notebook. No, I've got a specific notebook for this. Sorry, new computer, who dis? There we go. Um, and yes, this we are actually running off of my new computer, which is nice. All right, let's play notes. Uh, we're going to call this stat check. And then let's see if I can get OBS to actually capture this window. It... OBS has problems trying to do captures of anything that's um, Windows fanciness. One note. Yeah, you see how it's solid black? It's definitely not actually solid black. Like, I'm capturing the cursor. Let me just move things around a bit for a moment. Yeah, you can't even see the cursor. This is what I mean by uh, OBS has problems capturing that. So let's remove that. Let's add in a display capture. Yep, things are going to look weird for a bit. Don't worry. Because the thing that I want is way over on the left. It's my little one notebook for this. Stat check. We're not going to be using anywhere near that much screen real estate. And go like that. And yes, today is Thursday. And we're going to stick this under me. There. This was actually the reason for uh, having space under me, by the way, after... I had to redo things. So now you should be able to see me type. Yep, that works. Okay, so we have Jack versus Balloon. 
If I can spell balloon, that would be great. Three damage, 125 crit. So my theory as to how crits work, um, and this just established a theory, is that a critical hit just means that we ignore their defense. So let's go ahead and reload from save state. I actually don't know how the random encounters are generated in Wild Arms, so I might have a different random encounter by virtue of using some power apples. So, I'm, so right now they have Jack has strength 51. I should add that in here. Uh, 51 strength. Got it. Now, let's go ahead and increase this the 60. The reason why I'm going that high is that I don't know if I'm going to notice a difference at lower numbers. So the first thing I was going to do is... Uh, let's actually increase this by 10 and not 9. So 61. Oh. Um... His ATP is 71, and the reason why his ATP is 71 is that the Arctic Blade is actually doing plus 10 ATP. So, the weapon is plus 10 attack power. Uh, attack power is strength plus weapon. Um, that's the reason why Rudy, his weapon is only plus 7 attack power, which is part of the reason why his attack is so terrible. But more importantly, his arms have attack power. So that's plus 20 attack power. It's not actually 20. This makes sense. So, anyway, this is an extra plus 10 attack. Um, is it two balloons? No, it's not. I'm just going to run away for a bit until I get an encounter with a balloon. Man, I wish I actually had... So, one of Jack's tools much later in the game, his fourth tool, actually, which is fourth and last um darn it is a guitar and what the guitar does is that it allows you to um just summon a random battle right where you're standing it's needed for encounters with the optional bosses in the game so all i'm trying to do is encounter a balloon there we go okay so jack versus balloon now at 61 strength Regular hit is 135. So actually, I'm going to label this as ATP. So rather than it being 61 strength, it's... Or 51 strength, it's 61 ATP. And... 70, I apologize for the loud keyboard. 71 ATP. Okay. Yeah, if you can't tell, whenever I don't have the window active, it's not doing anything. It kind of looks hard to read. I need to increase the font size a little bit. It's at 11 point right now. Let's bump it up to 12. Mm, 14. It still fits in the window, so that's good enough. Okay. So... Um, I'm gonna get in. I'm going to try to hit a balloon one more time because unfortunately I didn't exactly have much. I, I'm not going to have much of a sample size in this case, uh, which is not the greatest. But I know that there's some randomness as to how this works, and I don't want to record a three-hour-long video tonight. This would be a lot easier if there was a consistent random battle, but there isn't. I'm just going to attack all the way. This is going to be easier. Critical hit, 157. So if my theory's right, it doesn't matter what enemy I'm fighting. It's going to be 157 for the crit. So I'm going to also test that theory out while I'm at it. Basically, what I'm trying to do is figure out what effect stats have on things. I keep forgetting that I can't use the analog stick the way I have RetroArch currently configured. Which... Oddly enough, matches the game, because I can't use an analog stick on my PS2 controller. Alright, damage on pill bug, critical hit, 156. See what I mean by it seems to be very similar? There's some type of roll involved, but I don't know what that roll is. 
It's going to take a lot of work for me to figure that roll out. And I'm going to be critting quite frequently because of my luck. Um, that's part of the reason why I wanted to make sure I had best luck going into here. Because then, in theory, it's less random? Alright, good. Another balloon. Chunk. 138. Okay. So I had 135. Fifty-six crit. Darn it. Goblins might actually have lower defense. Hmm. And I got yet another knife for Rudy. Not that it matters, because I am not keeping this. Anyway. So basically all I'm doing is trying to figure out, okay, what's the effect on stats? Pill bug? You get your crit or regular hit? Regular hit. 103. Pill bugs do have more defense. I do remember that. So, yeah. So this is seeming like I'm doing an extra 10 to 15 damage. I probably needed some more random encounters outside of pill bug first. Or outside of uh, increasing stats. What I want to see is what happens when I crit a balloon. See if my theory is right and that it's really just dropping defense. 133. Okay. So, so far what this is looking like, well no, because then the critical hits don't make any sense. That's more than 10 damage increase. Huh. Really wish I can crit a balloon again. That would be really handy right about now. Do you see why I'm trying to suggest that maybe you can skip these videos? Because they're probably not going to be all that interesting to anybody but me. me I have an encounter with balloons again please like a pair of balloons or triple balloons that would be nice wait balloons were also in somebody's dungeon weren't they right your balloon attack damage is 132 it's going down for some weird reason hmm, that's weird I actually hit Jack I'm that was a lot more damage than the last... No, that's right, it wasn't a goblin that I hit last, it was a pill bug, never mind. And goblins were the ones that I thought might not have actually had defense. Gonna crit? Yes, you are. 136 on crit. Okay, so that eliminates the idea that it's just no defense. Because that's way too large of a variance on critical hits. Okay. Good to know. Let's use some more power berries. Or power apples. Alright. Another plus 21. Let's eliminate these because they're no longer valid. It's not, it's just goofing off unless if you write it down, right? All right, regular attack is doing an extra 40 damage or so it looks like. But I'm wanting to test with balloons. Yeah, man, you can do this. You can do this. Hmm. 
Boogie. Still have not figured out the rhyme or reason to the boogie dance. I think it might actually be random. Which would be weird. Balloon? Nope. <sighs> Come on, game. You can give me balloons, I swear. Just give me some balloons! So we're at 91 ATP now, by the way. seems to be getting higher rather than lower. Hmm. Yep, everybody still has best luck, okay. At some point I will actually do an analysis on luck, but that's going to take a lot more time, and I also don't have the correct abilities yet. That's going to be much later. So some of the analysis that, analyses that I want to do just require me to have be at a later point in the game, basically. Um, Jack and Rudy both needed some extra things. There we go, we have a balloon. How much damage do I do against the balloon? 185. This doesn't match at all. So, that shouldn't... That should have only been an extra 20 damage. I'm gonna double check Jack's ATP to make sure it's not going up non-linearly. Because it's certainly possible that it is. Oh, this got complicated fast. This is the problem with not planning these things out very well. By the way, Rar. It's the Cuddlin. Um, so he has, yep, 91 ATP. What I would expect. But it's almost like it's not just attack minus defense. What would be ideal is if I could have Jack attack Rudy, but I would need to do a lot more hacking of the game. And that's a lot harder than I was expecting. Oh, screw it, just, just kill them all. And this is low enough XP where I shouldn't be gaining anything. As in gaining levels. Because I don't want levels to mess up my math. My analysis. Hmm. And again, the reason why I'm using Jack is that there's a chance that the game might do something weird like use... Cecilia's um, stats other than attack for things. Jack, it's definitely attack. Heck, Rudy, it's probably even safer to say that. Because I don't know if Jack's fast draws are actually using attack or not. That's one of the things I'm going to be analyzing. Uh, how far in? I'm already a half an hour in and I have nothing for results. Great! Okay, let me think. Um, blue books. I can consistently get into battles with blue books. Wait, no, the cave has a lot of balloons in it, doesn't it? What if I go into the berry cave? Because I want a more consistent way of getting these battles. Critical on the balloon. 190. So yeah, it criticals on the balloons aren't that much higher than the actual damage on a balloon. How does this make any sense? 
I'm hoping to get some more information. Another crit. 196. Paste another line. 196. Unknown damage. Oh, and to answer Peter's question, yeah. If you throw a box at a box, nothing happens to the box that you're aiming at. Yeah, this cave is a much better spot for me to be testing. Because there's balloons and pretty much nothing else. Alright. Jack regular hit is 165. That's a lot lower. What changed? I'll double check luck in case if it changed when we entered the berry cave. Yeah, I mean, Rudy's gonna kill the balloon, but now that we can consistently get balloons, this is less of a problem. Yeah, still best luck, still 91 ATP. I really don't understand. There must be a large variance. I'm wondering if the variance is some percentage of your, uh, ATP or something. Yeah, I mean, there are other enemies in here, it's just it's primarily balloons. Go away. Oh, that was a 200 damage critical. Uh. Yeah, I'm kind of confused by this. Wonder if it's something like a critical hit is half defense? Because that might make sense with the variants that we're seeing. Need more data. 167. Yeah, the 160s make more sense. Just gonna list it like that for now. We really don't need the Jack versus Balloon everywhere. Oh uh, yeah. Do that boogie. Yeah. You deserve it, Cecilia. You're an awesome character. Come on. This is the problem with trying to do this with high luck. Random encounters don't happen often enough. Maybe I should have used the curse spell. That would have actually made things a little bit easier also. Oh well, now I know. Berry Cave Curse Bell, 176. Okay, that's enough data for now. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna revert back, get some more data with 61 ATP, which easiest way to do that is to load state and run to the Berry Cave. I mean, I know I'm gonna hit one random encounter, but that should be okay. I did. Okay, so let's organize this a little bit, shall we? Let's make a little chart. Um, Do, 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 do. Okay. 
Doink. Doink. Now you can see my little chart thing. Uh, 61 ATP. So far we have 123 damage and 125 crit. Because we only have one of each of those. And damage here is 133 to 138 so far. Okay. And we have no crit data. Let's get back into this berry cave. Not bad for using a really bad D-pad. I, I mean, I guess the X-Bone D-pad's not that bad, but it's not great. All right. What do we have for an damage? 117. Let's get a little bit more data. Maybe this video will just be on attack and nothing else. Although I did want to get um, fast draw and uh, gun data. Because I actually don't know if fast draws are based off of sorcery or if they're based off of uh, attack. There's one fast draw in particular I want to test, but we've got a little bit before I can do that. Hell yeah, handpan. The real main character. So there are arguments to be made that each of the characters in Wild Arms 1 are the main character, so to speak. Ah, tassel Belms are not what I'm looking for. I want balloons. So what I'm going to be doing is eventually I'm going to crawl through the game's stats and try to find where the hell the balloon stats are. The problem is that the way the game is made, the, um... The location in the files for the name Balloon, in this case, is in a very different spot from everything else. The reason why I know that is that there's pretty much nothing but translations in there. And that's actually one of the few things that are different between the Japanese version and the North American version, is that it's a translation. I could open up the same file and see Japanese content instead. 120. That's within our existing... Okay, um, I want to see at least one more crit on a balloon before I call it. Come on. Really should have learned curse ahead of time. Is it me or am I not critting as often? 110, that's a new low. So now I'm starting to see more variants, so it could just be that I was unfortunately lucky. Um, I need to do this a lot more often to get more data, and I'll probably do that at some point. I'm not as concerned about the variants. All I was really trying to do was, what's the effect of each of the stats? Like, hey look, using a power apple, what's that actually do for me? Crit? No. 116, we're in the same realm. I mean, looking at the attack variants, I currently have a 13 variance at 61 ATP and a 20 variance at 91 ATP. That could just be that I haven't seen the full variance of the 61 ATP is the problem. Uh, ATP stands for attack power, by the way. One oh eight. That's a new low. So now we're at eight, 15 variance. There we go. Man, leveling up against uh, using balloons would be rough. One XP per. And this is one of those games that you don't ever uh, have XP decrease for an enemy, so they're always worth one XP. Ooh, two balloons. Maybe I won't crit them. Or maybe I won't counterattack them, I mean. 110, that's within our, within our attack range. So I'm pretty sure I've decisively concluded that counterattacks are at the same strength as a regular attack. It'd be nice if I only had Jack while I'm doing this test. 
But that would have required me to, you know, do this earlier on. And I didn't have access to power apples. Which is unfortunate, because that would have been a much easier test now that I think about it. One twenty-three. That seems to be approaching max. I mean, if we have the same variance that we had at ninety-one ATP, um, then we have an extra five attack. Oh, crit! Nice. Uh, one thirty-six. Ooh, that is significantly higher. Also, typo. Okay, a little bit more of this. Uh, I was thinking this might have been a short video. I should know better by now. A um, little bit more of this, then I'm going to move on. Preemptive strike. Not that that matters. 103, and there is our full range. Because that now has the same range as this. Which is interesting. Huh. I have one more, then I'm gonna stop this. One more balloon, that is, not one more random encounter. Just in case if I get a stupid tetzel dome. Yes, crit, that's good. 119. Okay. So, if we take these stats and extrapolate a little bit. Oh, I should increase font size, sorry. There, it's a little better for you all. Um, if I take these stats and extrapolate a little bit, um, what it appears to be is that we're getting some percentage of ATP where the maximum hit is actually a little over double ATP, at least against a balloon. Um, so 123 damage is the max that I've seen. Double 61 would be 122. 185 is the maximum damage that we saw at 91 ATP. Double 91 ATP would be 182. They're very similar numbers. Double 71 would end up being 142. This is four under, but that could just be me not seeing, because we haven't seen the full range of damage on that. Uh, attack range seems to be 20, so it could actually be that they're producing a random number between 1 and 20. That doesn't make much sense. So what I was expecting was that the range would grow as your ATP gets higher. Let's do this last one. Then I'm going to do one more of these. Let's get some good data, please. 117 within our range. And crit. Crit of 126, that's within our range, okay. So this is all just corroborating data. Now, let's bump things up quite a bit more. I'm not fast forwarding or anything, I'm actually capable of tapping that fast. Uh, do I have enough? For, yeah, I should have enough for 261. Oops, just realized that no, that was a lot higher. Oh well. How many more do I have? 36. Okay. So that... Yes, that's 311. That will be our last column here. Let's go ahead and table, insert below. 311 ATP. All right. This should give us our last data point that we need for figuring out how power works. 
And so, yeah, maybe this video is just power and nothing else. Or attacks. Yeah, I'll, I'll limit this video to just attacks. That makes sense, because I can still get in Fast Draw and Rudy's thing. And then I'll deal with Mystic later. Alright, so this is going to be an utter slaughter. So that's a crit at 640 damage. Uh, so yeah, it's definitely not linear damage. Definitely not linear damage. Or, as in, plus one ATP does not correlate to plus one damage. Plus one ATP correlates with quite a bit more than plus one damage. Even against balloons. Regular hit, please? Wonder if crit hit rate has something to do with that. how often that's happening. 623... So we're already seeing a fairly large variance. But it makes me wonder if we see a 20 variance in crits along with the 20 variance in attacks. That'd be interesting. Because that would mean that the roll is after the crit damage, not before. Also, this completely blows the idea of defense being related to crit out of the water, I think. Regular attack is 580. 580. Six forty. That's a much larger variance. Was it six forty one? Sorry. Uh yeah, that's a sixty point variance and not twenty like I was saying before. So there's gotta be some type of multiplier uh, thing that's happening. chunk 665 that's actually more damage than what we were doing on a crit that's weird that's very weird actually 677 that's almost a hundred damage variance and keep in mind we're in a 9999 system so Damage can get quite a bit higher than this. It's just, well, 311 is actually not that high damage. Or high ATP. We're going to be... Jack, there's a good chance we'll be hitting 999 ATP in the game. Um, when I looked at my previous save, Rudy had 999 Vitality, and Cecilia had 999 Mystic without any equipment. So, yeah... Fifty-four. Maybe the 580 was a fluke? Was it actually 680 and it wasn't paying? No. Why are the crits so much lower? I need to see more crits. Hmm. 572. Yeah, no. That variance is over a hundred wide. Hmm. So, let's pop open a calculator, I think. Let me just get into another battle with balloons. Five sixty five is even lower. All right. Opening up the calculator, moving it in the way, and let's switch this to scientific mode. I don't need anything else. So, um, one oh three. Ah. Yeah, that doesn't work very well. Let me move this up. Move calculator up. There, that'll work. So 103 divided by 61. Ah, cables are in the way. 
Um, that's roughly 169%, so say 170% of that value. So 61 times 1.7 is 103.7. 311 times 1.7 is 528. In theory, that should be the low end. This is not adding up at all. Okay, so that doesn't appear to be linear. I mean, no, there's defense that's involved, right? So um, we don't know what the balloon's defense is. So what it actually ends up looking like is that we have defense in this game is probably, not certainly, but probably something along the lines of attack roll minus defense damage dealt. That's probably the way it works because it's the way it works in most games. Um, Might Magic is actually one of the few exceptions to that here, uh, that type of thing, as is D&D. Um, resistances cause that to not work out in D&D. Although we've already figured out how resistances work. Um, or we figured out how... Um, not resistance. Uh, we figured out how... Uh, why am I brain farting because it's late at night. Um, we figured out how weaknesses work. So anyway, um, it means that there's some type of defense being thrown into here. Defense would be linear because we're fighting the same enemy. We're fighting a balloon. Our theory is that, my theory is that balloons have five defense for reference. I don't have a great way of finding out because I don't know where to find the balloon's stats. I no, I can, I can figure out what file they're in at best. To figure out what file they're in, all I need to do is load up an emulator to point at my actual disk and then use a program to find out what files are being accessed on that disk. I can do that, but I'm gonna have to do that some other time. Um, this crit range is bothering me. Because that indicates that critical hits are actually doing less damage than regular attacks, and that doesn't make any sense. But I can totally see crits merging into attacks. I mean, take a look over here. Even at 61 ATP, the lower end of crit was already... Pardon me. Um, lower than the higher end of a regular attack. Whatever the crit attack actually does, does not seem to have much of an effect on balloons. On other creatures might be a different story, I don't know. Easy way to find out if that is sorcery or attack based. That is definitely ATP based. Okay, that's good to know. <laughs> it's like, yeah, nope, I would not be doing hundreds of damage. I would be doing two digit. Maybe low three digit. Also, that does mean that that actually does more damage than a regular attack, which I wasn't sure about that last video. It didn't seem that way. I can use another crit right about now. 610. 610's in my normal range. Um. Hmm. I mean, it's possible that a crit is just a reroll, but the crit range at 61 ATP doesn't indicate that. The crit range... Yeah, I can move this back down again. Think. Um, the 60, uh, 61 ATP crit range does not indicate... There we go. Um, or rephrase. Um, the upper end of the crit range is above the upper end of the attack range that we've seen. Otherwise, I would say it's something along the lines of roll twice, drop the lowest. Which would be a really interesting way of handling crits now that I think about it. I wonder if you can pull that off in D&D. 566, that's on the lower end, but... Okay. Um, and I'm still assuming that damage is equally random. That is, that for the 311 ATP, we have a damage range of 565 to 7, 677. There's an equal chance of each of those bits of damage. That's not necessarily the case, but I really don't want to do the complex mathematics to figure out the probabilities of that. 
Uh, all I've got is empirical data that I'm operating off of, and it's not great. I have 76, yeah. Okay. Um, that's pretty much all I can do when it comes to figuring out attack. I mean, we already know how Rudy's attacks work. It's using it's basically using the gun as though it's a weapon that you have equipped and until i have better weapons i can't really do too much else with that just doing confirmation that oh wow i actually went for faster not expecting that ah there's a crit for 603 yeah okay yeah i think that's about it this is not the conclusion I was expecting to come up with. I don't, I'm, to be honest, I wasn't exactly sure what to expect. I didn't really know. Hence the reason why I wanted to try this. Preemptive strike. Okay, so I can at least get two data points from this. 640. That's on the high end of crit, but that wasn't a crit. And 612. Yeah, about the best that I have is that the variance in attack damage increases over time. What that means is that there's likely some type of multiplier effect that's going on. So going back down here again, attack roll is likely Something along the lines of ATP plus X times ATP, where X is some random number. So I'm never, I mean, I'm never getting a roll that's below 100%. So in other words, I am never doing the amount of damage that my ATP would indicate, which makes sense. Uh, there'd be no way to do 9999 damage otherwise, because stats max at 999. There has to be some type of multiplier effect going on. Um, I'm not sure what that is, though. And the part that I really don't know is whether the attack... Uh, whether... Yeah, I didn't even see the damage, but it was 600 something. So what I don't know is, here, let's clear this out a little bit. So there's one of two ways that I can see this working. Get one note. Um, one of two ways that I can see this working. Let me make this, let me begin it a little bit. So first way is ATP plus X times ATP minus def equals damage. So in other words, we have our ATP, we have some type of random roll, which is the multiplier times ATP. X is somewhere between zero and one. Actually, this seems to indicate it's more than one because that's over double damage. That doesn't make any sense. And we've definitely seen 640 damage as well. So it's not just a single outlier. Huh. Well, crap. There goes that theory entirely. So, bring back out the calculator. At 311... That's 180% of damage. That's pretty close to what we were seeing for minimum damage before um, with the 61 ATP. That was 103 divided by 61 is 170%. So it could be that minimum is actually 170% because 1.7 times 61 is 103.7. If it's just truncating, 170% might actually be lowest. 
Um, let's quickly verify. 7 times 91 is 154. It's possible we just never saw it. So let's just say that minimum damage is around 170% ATP. Now keep in mind, that's minimum damage to a balloon. Balloons do have defense, just not very good defense. And let's get another data point in. Because we can go lower on ATP because we have Cecilia. Cecilia's ATP right now is 23. Her equipment is terrible. Is literally plus one ATP. So Cecilia has 23 ATP. So actually let's label this as balloon. Because I don't think there's a difference between which character is doing the attack. So, 31 ATP. Table, insert above. It's doing 35 damage. Which would indicate that defense is having a bigger effect at lower ATPs, which would make sense. Um... That probably means we can figure out its defense pretty quickly, now that I think about it. Let's figure this out really fast, because, you know, it's already been an hour, and all I've done is attack balloons for an hour. Why are you watching this? Anyway, that was 38 damage. I think that was 38. I was not paying attention, unfortunately. Now, this should have a much lower variance. Actually, I wonder if it's a multiplier on their defense? No, that doesn't make any sense. That'd be a really weird way of calculating this. Then again, there are weirder ways. Oh, critical hit of 50. Okay. Um, Final Fantasy Tactics uses a multiplier system of 10,000 for some reason, um, which is to say that it calculates things using floating point math, which, why? You don't need decimal points in FFT, and also multiplies things by 10,000 to get the actual answer. It's a really weird system, and I don't understand why they do it that way. I don't care about Tetzel Belms. I only care about balloons. So I think if I stay in this first room, I only end up encountering balloons. So I don't remember encountering anything else. All right, Cecilia, 38. Cecilia, 38. Fairly consistent on damage, unlike the higher ATPs, which would make sense, because if there's less variance because the defense is higher, Maybe the defense is a percentage now that I think about it. How do other people's defenses look? No, it's defense points, and that's a linear number. That'd be a little weird if it was a percentage damage reduction. Critical. 50. It's the same critled. Crit damage, that's interesting. Oh, and then Jack's going to slaughter the thing for 610 damage. Okay. Interesting. None of this makes any sense. That's right, I wanted to stay inside of this room. I can also test with Rudy's attack. 
Another crit for 50 damage. The crits are all 50 for her. Weird. Why is she so much more consistent? The weapon. Let's try it. So, if it truly is the weapon, Jack should be doing basically the exact same amount of damage every time. On crits. Jack punches for 649. 649. So this is 301 ATP. 649. See, these are the types of things that I want to find out. Because if crits are based off of weapons, there's actually a reasonable idea about not equipping weapons on Cecilia. Which is weird. Okay. Back punch in the face. 639. Okay, so there's still a variance. 6 is critting for 50 again. It's the only reason I can think of why there'd be no variance in what Cecilia does is because it's based off of her weapon. Her weapon does one point uh, one ATP. In fact, now she has no weapon. Oops. So in theory, if this was linear, she should now be doing forty nine damage on a crit. I somehow doubt this is linear. What's Jack gonna do? I'm gonna crit again? No. Regular hit 586. <sighs> what in the world is with this game? Cecilia, how are you going to punch it? Or headbutt. 35 damage, which is the minimum. If she consistently does 35 damage on an attack, I know how this works. I don't think that's going to be the case, but... That'd be nice. I just noticed the skin lines in the smoke. Is that in my PS2 version? Is that an emulator glitch? Jack, you punch for 628. You crit 45. Interesting. It's only one ATP difference, but the crit damage has dropped by five. That doesn't make any sense. I don't think this is a linear equation. Pretty sure that this is a piecemeal equation. These numbers don't make any sense to me. Five eighty six. You doing thirty five? Thirty six. Okay. Let's get this down. Okay. What the heck? I mean, you can even see the difference in ATP. Like, the 30 ATP versus the 61 ATP. I'm doing way more than double damage with the 61 ATP. In fact, I'm doing close to triple damage. Cecilia's is more interesting, so I'm going to keep using her for a bit. 35. Her damage is a lot more consistent now. A 
lot more consistent. Hmm. Move this up a little bit so it's easier to see. The min damage line is no longer valid. Honk. 45? 44! There is a variance. So I bet there probably was a variance in the crit hit rate before as well. It's just it depends on the roll. And the rolls are so tiny at that low of a ATP that it doesn't make a difference. Which means there's definitely a multiplier in effect. Hmm. I mean, I know I'm probably the only person on the planet that cares about these things. But I really like knowing how these work. 33 damage, that's the lowest to date. And that's actually below its minimum uh, maximum hit points. If you couldn't tell, it has 35 hit points. So we have the same variance now on Cecilia. It's literally doing two points less damage for one ATP difference. There's definitely weird rounding going on. I wonder if I can edit the save state. That was a 33 again. Thirty-five. Okay. Huh. huh. This is gonna require some more investigation, but I'm going to stop it. Generally here, let's just get a little bit more data from Rudy this time. Oh yeah, what is Rudy's ATP right now? Uh, 50. Nice simple number. Table, insert below. 50 ATP. By the way, the ones that are starred are the ones that don't have a weapon equipped. I tried to make it consistent. So 50 ATP. I'm hitting for, oh, that's right, Rudy is that slow. I'm critting for 100. That's a nice simple number there. Man, it'd be nice if this actually just came up with simple numbers. Um, let's go ahead and just use a crap ton of agility. Or agile apples on Rudy. By the way, I really am hitting the button. That should help some. So now Rudy will be first on an it. We'll do the um, what the Agile Apples actu uh, effects actually are later on. Ninety six damage. Please don't kill it. Of course you killed it. Ah. Yeah, do that, Pookie. I see how you are. You just want to ruin my empirical data, don't you? Hmm. Crit, 400? 93, okay. Once more, the crit range is overlapping the regular attack range, which is weird. Maybe. Boo! No! I really need to f find where she's getting that tissue that she keeps ripping. more and then I'm gonna call it. I know I keep saying that. I'm sorry. Also, wow is it weird seeing how little um, how few resources are actually in use by OBS on my new desktop. So 
my primary laptop, it was using a huge chunk of CPU. That was the reason why I was pausing at 60 FPS. And this is running at 60 FPS as well. Um, on the streaming laptop, which is my uh, 87, that's a new result. On the streaming laptop, it was using maybe about, I think I had said it was about 10% CPU. This is using 0.5%. And the reason being is that this computer is a monster, or sorry, 0.3%. Um, this computer is an utter monster on CPU power. So that doesn't surprise me in the slightest that it's so much more powerful. And I actually don't think I'm using GPU acceleration right now either, which is weird. 89, okay. It gives me an idea at least. Um, I don't know if that's middle of the range, end of the range or what, but so I've got a thought as to how this is working and I think the key to this uh, key to figuring out this puzzle is probably figuring out the reason why the crit range is so overlappy and I bet that it's not on weaker enemies, or on stronger enemies. 45, yeah, that's within the normal crit. So I think it has something to do with defense. It's the only explanation, because otherwise I shouldn't be seeing overlap at all. Hundred and seven crit. That's a new record. Thirty seven attack is also a new record. Yeah. So here's the thing that's confusing me it's this right here. There's only 19 ATP difference, but the damage difference is huge. Like, the difference in here appears to be one damage, basically. I bet this is actually a minimum of 34, and those are the actual ranges. Oops. And these are the actual ranges. That's just one ATP, though. This is 19 ATP, and it's doing over double damage. That doesn't make any sense at all. That's the reason why I'm pretty sure this is a piecemeal formula for figuring out damage. Because that doesn't add up to any formula that I can think of. And what I basically would need to do is this over and over and over again. Increasing ATP by one each time. And I don't have the time to do that, unfortunately. 98... That's a new normal. No, it's, that's a new record, actually. Ah. Dang it, one note. 98. Okay. So we're going to stop this here. Uh, let's see. Let me think. Think, 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 think. I need to graph this. This is going to be a to be continued on the stats. Um, the next video, I'll have more information because I don't want to make graphs while I'm recording because this has already been an hour and 20 minutes. I don't need this to be three hours, as I mentioned before, and I would like to have some sleep tonight. It's Thursday night, as you can tell from it saying literally Thursday, August 8th as to when I created the page. Uh, yep. Okay, well... All I can tell you at the moment is that increasing attack power increases the amount of damage you do by significantly more than you would expect. The higher the attack power, the bigger difference that you would expect. So there's obviously some type of additional additive effect, kind of like if damage is not linear but quadratic. And I'm going to see what I can do some numerical analysis on because I might as, might as well actually use my degree for once. 
and figure out if there's some type of curve that kind of makes sense and then extrapolate what that means from there. It's also possible that it has something to do with the weapon. I can't rule that out. This is the reason why I can't rule that out. There's very the only difference between these two right here is that I have a weapon equipped that's doing one ATP. Actually, I can figure that out really easily. It just dunned on me. All I have to do is give Cecilia a power apple. Because that will increase her... her. She doesn't have 31 ATP. That was a mistake, wasn't it? I bet somebody in the comments has been screaming about it. It's 22 ATP and 23. Okay, these numbers starting to make a little bit more sense now. Anyway, um, if I increase her attack power by one through an apple, it should do the same thing as re-equipping that item. Because attack power is attack power, right? Yep, this is gonna get longer. Of course it is. On the plus side, at least I finally found a room that just has balloons in it. It took me over half the video. Hi, how are you? Is this the type of thing that interests anybody but me? I'm pretty sure the answer is no. I'm doing this for myself, but... You know. 36. That's it. Within normal range. Fifty? Fifty. Yep. Okay. So at least this tells me that ATP is ATP is ATP. At least as far as I can tell, there's no actual difference. So I'm going to graph these, and I will talk to you next time, Internet. Uh, probably in three days. Uh, it'll probably end up being a regular video and not another interlude. But who knows? Bye!